الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله Praise be to Almighty Allah we praise him we seek his help we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with our Lord from the evils of our souls and our misdeeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, alone without partners unto him. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in his glorious book, O you who have believed, fear Allah as he should be feared, and do not die except as Muslims in submission to him. Imat Muslimin, in what's often referred to as the famous hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam, there are a series of questions which Jibreel alayhi salam poses to Rasul sallallahu alayhi salam in a very a uh, strange setting and the companion, companions are very astounded by the situation. But anyway, that's not the point. The, the, question that, the questions that Jibreel asks Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first of all is, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Islam is to testify that there is no God, sorry, that there is no true God, but Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. To establish the prayer, to give charity, to fast the month of Ramadan and to perform the Hajj to the house that one can find a way. Jibreel responds with, you have spoken truthfully. And the companions are like, who's this fellow talking to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi telling him that he's given the truth. But anyway, and then he says to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell me about faith. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responds, faith is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, the last day and to believe in the divine decree of Qadr and both its good and its evil. Jibreel again responds, you have spoken truthfully. Imagine saying to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, MashaAllah well done, you know, this is what Jibreel said, companions of What's going on here? And then he asks once more and he says to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell me about excellence, Ihsan. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, excellence is to worship Allah as if you see him. 
For though you do not see him, he surely sees you. In this encounter, my brothers, we learn about the three levels of our faith or of our deen. The first being to submit, to be a Muslim, to submit ourselves to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first level. The second level is where we have belief or faith. That is the level of Iman. We often use the word Iman. And the third level, which Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi describes, is that of Ihsan, of excellence. Inshallah, what I want to explore today is not so much the detail of these levels, but rather the ever, or sorry, the, yeah, yeah, the ever-changing position on this spectrum between merely surrendering <coughs> through to being excellent in our faith. In other words, my brothers, it's not a one-way journey. You don't start as being a Muslim and then you just keep going towards ihsan. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, it's back and forth. It's back and forth. I've heard this description of our Iman being as though a flame that you have in a candle. Sometimes the wind will come and it will go, and it will go back and then it will become stronger again. But the amazing thing about this candle is that it's one of those candles, I don't know if you've ever said that trick, you get it at the trick stores, you blow it and it just never goes out. <laughs> it's, like, it's a cool trick to try on the kids. Oh, I'm giving the kids a story away, but they try it with the kids. Blow it and it never goes out. And this is how we can sometimes describe our faith. Although the, we won't get into the part where the flame can go out, because that's not the topic today. But my point is that the flame will waver when the wind comes, when the life treats us with, 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 with situations. The flame will go and the flame will come. Why does this happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ash-Shaytanu ya'idhukumu al Shaitan threatens you with poverty and orders you to immorality, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you forgiveness from him and bounty. And Allah is all encompassing and knowing. Shaitan is the source of one of the sources of challenging our faith, our iman. He will put us, he will try to deceive us. He will tell us that you are poor because, because you, your Lord doesn't look after you. There are times when we will go through which are difficult and they will cause us harm. This is another time when our faith seems to waver, when the light flickers, when we get a bit weak. And the third thing which weakens our faith is worldly distractions. The allure of the worldly fun and games and entertainment it's not, it shouldn't be new to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us so many times, but specifically in Surah Al-Hadid, Al-Hadid, Know that the life of this world is but amusement and diversion and adornment and boasting to one another and competition and increase of wealth and children. My dear brothers, who is our number one enemy? Of course, it is Shaitan. When we have times where we question our faith, guess who's there to help us along? Shaitan. Enemy number one. Shaitan will encourage us to do small things bad. And he'll build on that. And he'll build on that. And he'll build on that. He'll say things like, so weak. There's no going back. Shaitan will say things to us, not literally, but it will come into our hearts. You're a loser. You can't be a good Muslim, so why bother? You can't be a perfect Muslim. Why bother? You've already done so and so. Fill in the gap, whatever it is that you've done. So why not? Just keep going. And a favorite never be accepted. So don't worry about it. Just go with the flow. Do with your do your thing. Jamaat Muslimi, these are the whispers of Shaitan and he helps us to, to flicker that flame and put that flame out. 
but we don't have anything to fear because there's no problem, there's no challenge in this world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created that does not have its solution. So while we sit for the next few moments, let us reflect on these ayat which we are very well familiarized with. We've all heard several times. For indeed, indeed, with hardship will be ease. Indeed, with hardship will be ease. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين واستغفر إنه Like they ask, so we, we know that shaitan will come. But how do we deal with this? What are some of the ways that we can manage these times when our faith feels weak? Because they will come and they will come every, they'll come at different stages to different times of us. But there are, very, there are many things we can do. Number one, what we can do is seek knowledge. Knowledge is a shield against doubts. We must seek Islamic knowledge all throughout our lives, from our youngest age till we die. And our younger brothers especially ask questions. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. In fact, sometimes we think by asking questions we get, remember that Islam is 100% half truth. So whatever questions you ask, the answer is going to be the right answer on one provision, that you seek your answers from the right sources. Reddit ain't gonna give it to you, mate. Quora ain't gonna give you the answers. They're gonna give you the answers, but not gonna be the right answers. Go to the correct sources. Number two, who is our salvation with? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is who we turn to. Turn to Allah with sincerity when our faith is wavering. Number three, increase our taqwa, our piety. How do we do that? You're in a situation of weak faith. How can you tell me to increase our taqwa? It's counterintuitive. But we need to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be, be mindful. Last time we spoke, we spoke about um, our fairy dust, our potions, our superpowers in Islam. Intention. Dhik. Dua. The fourth thing we can do is surround ourselves with good company. The community of believers who can support us. Who can support us when we are weak. Not who can criticize us and kick us further down. Not can tell you, oh yeah, you know. Like Shaitan's whispering to you, let's go somewhere else. Laugh for it. Find the right people. Choose to mix with the right people. And fifthly, last one, is engage in consistent acts of rebellion. Salah is such a basic thing, but it is the bedrock of our faith. If we give up on our salah, there is no hope that your faith is going to come back. We have to turn back to our salah. Establish the salah five times a day regularly in Jamaat if we can at the best of time do it in Jamaat again it comes back to that fourth one being in community being with a support mechanism and here's a, a bonus one and it goes again to that counterintuitive one is that if you really want to boost your iman I know I said consistently but find something that you know that you struggle with so for example if you know you struggle to get up in the morning Find a way to get yourself to the masjid for fajr. And do it consistently. Wallahi, the boost in your mind that strength will be in, in, immense. If you love food, most of us love food, alhamdulillah. Find a way to fast regularly once a week. Monday or Thursday, or both if you can. But do it regularly if it's food you love. Think about it. The thing that we challenge ourselves the most with is the way we can get our most strength from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Zukhruh, Scary ayah. And whoever is blinded from remembrance of the most merciful, we appoint for him a devil. And he is to him a companion, a tabi. We don't want to get to a position where our faith is so weak that we cannot turn back because we've got this shaitan with us all the time. So in conclusion, Jamaat Muslimi, our faith, our iman, it will waver, it will go up, it will come down. It's a given. It is natural. 
Importantly, we are not to beat ourselves up about it. I'm bad, I'm weak, I'm such a bad Muslim. I'm, no, this is not the way of Islam. At the same time, don't let yourself be given in, don't, give us, don't let ourselves give in to shaitan. And don't let shaitan be our God. Let's fortify ourselves against the whispers of shaitan and turn to our Lord who is most beneficent, most merciful. Is ar rahman and I leave you with this hadith, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, I am just as my slave thinks I am. In other words, I am able to do for him what he thinks I can do for him. And I am with him if he remembers me. If he remembers me in himself, I too remember him in myself. And if he remembers me in a group of people, I remember him in a group that is far better than them. And if he comes one span nearer to me, I go to him one cubit. And if he comes one cubit nearer to me, I go the distance of two outstretched arms nearer to him. And if he comes to me walking, subhanAllah, I go to him running. Jamaat al-Muslimi, in this beautiful time, or this beautiful day, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his mercy upon us. We thank you, Allah, Ya Allah, we ask you to extend your our mercy, sorry, extend your mercy on us, Ya Allah, to the end of our lives and into our akhir, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, forgive us our sins and our shortcomings, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to strengthen our faith. Ya Allah, accept all of our good actions as a means to draw closer to you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, help us to keep our intentions pure and sincere. Ya Allah, help us focus on our ultimate purpose, which is to serve you and to protect us, Ya Allah, from being distracted by the petty things in this world. Ya Allah, place us, place contentment, positivity, and gratitude in our hearts and in our lives, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, bring us closer to you every day. Accept our good deeds and forgive us our transgressions. Ya Allah, help us change ourselves so that we can together change this woman. Ya Allah, grant us this diploma, Ya Allah. Allahumma rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhira fi hasana, wa fi na'adha bin nabu, wa ba'd hinna jannatam min al-barar, ya Azizu, ya Ghafari, ya Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibad Allah, إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون. Surely Allah commands justice, good deeds and generosity to others and to relatives. And he forbids all shameful deeds and injustice and rebellion. He instructs you so that you may be reminded. فاذكروني أذكر أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تذكروا. And remember me, I will remember you. Be grateful to me and do not reject the faith. وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمْ مَا تَصْنَعُونَ And without doubt, remembrance of Allah is the greatest thing in life. And Allah knows the deeds.